Thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring today's video. Simply Safe's award-winning system starts with cutting-edge technology and is backed by highly trained 24-7 monitoring professionals. They're ready to dispatch police and send help when you need it. It's whole home protection for every window, room, and door, inside and outside against intruders, fires, water damage, medical emergencies, and more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. There's peace of mind knowing our home is protected whether we are home or away. And at less than a dollar a day, it is half the cost of traditional home security brands. We love that there are no long-term contracts and you can start and stop at any time with no hidden fees. Your Simply Safe security system ships directly to your door and can be set up in just around 30 minutes. We never thought that serious home security could be so easy to use. Simply Safe designed this technology so you can do the install yourself and still get all of the safety benefits. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash Ranch to learn more. Okay, I am in between a couple of projects. I have the excavator uh, reserved for the entire week next week. So I have a few days where I can do uh, something else. I'm gonna continue working on these trees and cutting these trees down as needed. I hope to have enough time next week with that excavator to spend some time over here with it. And I have found that it makes working through these trees much, much better if if they're obviously cut down ahead of time, then all I have to do is come back and pull the stumps out of the ground with the uh, excavator. So my excavator, by the way, is still sitting down at the dealership, the nearest Cabelco dealership to me. And they have had it now for over four months. And I got a phone call from them about a week ago and they basically just asked me for more time. I, I even asked if it would be more beneficial for me to send it down to a bigger dealership. But it's the same last problem and it seems to be related to switching uh, from high to low with the track speeds. I'm hoping that they can get it figured out. They seem to have the same issue that everybody else does right now where they can't find any, uh, any skilled labor. They can't find anybody that wants to work or learn a trade, so they're shorthanded. But anyway, for the next couple of days, I'm going to work on uh, cutting these trees and then I have to get the railroad ties moved up to where the water tanks are ahead of time. And the second that excavator shows up here, I want to go to work uh, with the excavator. I don't want to be messing around with other things. So, uh, by the way, Cedar is gone for the rest of the day. So I'm hoping to get most of this done before she gets back. We need the firewood. Mm -hmm. I really haven't been back over here to the new property to do any chainsaw work since I cut my foot. But I've got a couple of days in between projects and it's as good a time as any to get back to it. There are so many dead and dying trees on this property because of the overgrowth that I have to be very selective about how I cut things down because they are all intertwined and prepared to fall on each other. I have found that when I'm cutting these maples down that it's the dead ones that I really need to be concerned about because they're constantly letting stuff fall out of the tops of the trees that could potentially come down and hurt me. And there are many very large dead trees on this new property that I'll have to get down.
As I cut these trees down, the first thing I do is back up and simply look at the tops of the trees. And just by looking at the tops of those trees, I can see which ones are diseased and dying and which ones are healthy and should be left behind. But either way, it's a bit painful cutting down some of these bigger trees, but I'm trying to keep it to trees under about four inches in diameter. I have been thinning this section here for about an hour and a half and if I pulled the stumps out of the ground you almost wouldn't even know there were ever trees here because it's still so thick and the plan is to let these trees that have been left behind get thicker and get bigger and get healthier without the competition of these other trees that are going to end up dying anyway. So the criteria is pretty simple, and it's leaning or it's closer to a bigger, healthier tree, it has to go. But the same criteria applies even if the tree is bigger. I have to hand pick the healthiest tree that's going to be left behind, and make sure everything else is about 10 feet away from it at least. That is about all I got in the tank for today. I'm going to get out here tomorrow and just keep working my way. Try and stay about this high and just keep working my way. And I've been cutting trees down right here for the last two hours. And if you look up, you can't even tell. It's supposed to be 94 degrees today uh, before it gets too warm. I'm going to real quickly um, mow the front yard before I get over there and start cutting trees down. But a number of people have asked us why we would even bother uh, mowing the grass up here, especially over where the, the uh, goats go, the animals go. And by consistently mowing the yard, it's ultimately making the grass thicker. So I'm going to really quickly do the front yard here and then get over there and start cutting trees down. The more I think about what I'm trying to do here with our place, the more I wonder if I'm actually part of the problem as opposed to the solution to the problem. Why wouldn't I just let nature do what nature does and leave the front yard as it was with overgrown maple trees? Why would we even bother putting a lawn in up here anyway? Well, the answer is very simple. Even nature needs a bit and bridle, just like the rest of us from time to time as well. Letting nature run wild and free is exactly what our new piece of property looks like. Most of the trees are dying or have disease in them, and they must be cut back.
Plus it feels good taking a little bit of pride in the front yard. This is right where I was working when I cut my foot a few weeks ago. And I had the thought um, that I'm actually gonna work from the furthest property line back over towards the house because it's so hard. Uh, it's it's hard to, to film this. It's hard to visually, you can't even tell that I did anything. Uh, Cedar's a little bit perturbed with me this morning, not because she can tell that I cut down trees, but because I actually told her that while she was gone with the kids uh, last night, I, I spent a couple hours cutting down trees. But I just drove what's supposed to be the driveway up in here, and up in this corner up here is kind of where I wanted to start carving out the first um, of, I hate to call it a house pad, but I guess a pad of some kind where we could park trailers and the plow truck, things like that. But I first have to get all these trees uh, thinned out. Many, many years ago, my great, great, great grandfather was cutting down a tree in the woods with an ax when he missed the tree and hit himself in the leg with that same ax and he was sure he was going to bleed to death. So that dead branch was hanging in that tree long enough for that tree to grow around it. My third great grandfather, who was actually born in 1788, he said that when he cut his leg with his ax, that someone showed up almost out of thin air and gave him something to pour over the wound on his leg, which caused the bleeding to stop. And as quickly as that person was there to help him, that person was gone. My great, great, great grandfather didn't die that day. My third great-grandfather was born in upstate New York in 1788, but he would die in one of our communities here locally. The cemetery that he happens to be in, he is the oldest headstone in the cemetery. He would go on to lose his foot after that accident, but he still came all the way across the country with the pioneers and made a great life. My great-great-great-grandfather would spend a large portion of his life in the latter years serving others. He spent a very large amount of time grinding wheat and corn for the widows in the community that might have needed a little bit of help. And he didn't let the fact that he only had one foot slow him down either.
That tree is the kind of tree that people get hurt by. A big, heavy, dead tree is very hard to predict what it's going to do once you start cutting it up. And if I left the trees as they are, we could be taking our lives in our own hands just taking a walk through the woods. And I'm not going to do that. I lived through some of the worst wildfires in Arizona's history when we lived back in Arizona. And I watched the pendulum swing in the White Mountains when all of the sawmills got shut down. And over the next 20 years, none of the forests were cut down or thinned or maintained in any way. And then we had a couple of dry summers. And then poof, there goes a million acres. And then it happened again. And every summer it's a constant battle, and now they recognize that leaving the forests alone to run amok is producing too much fuel for these forest fires. Oh yeah, and then there's the bark beetles. The path of least resistance is good for absolutely nobody. By letting these trees do whatever it is that they want to do, they are killing each other. In order to utilize this land and get it as healthy as it possibly can be, these trees must be thinned. So as I cut these trees down, I utilize the firewood wherever I can, but everything else will be piled up and burned as soon as it cools off. The cleanup process is going to take a little while, but as soon as we can, we will plant grass seed all over the property and again do everything we can to fast forward how much time it's going to take to make this land usable for us. So if you look up at the top, a lot of these trees, it helps me decide which ones I'm going to cut down. They're all dying, except for that big one in the middle. I'm just going to accelerate that process a little bit. So this is the spot up here where I want to put the, uh, the turnaround pad for the uh, switchback, um, which means the driveway is going to come right through here. I'm going to work pretty seriously on this back in here getting it thinned and then at some point, uh, hopefully after I get the water tank uh, done, I want to dig a hillside out and get this driveway cut in for sure. If I left these trees right here alone, one by one they will all die and one large tree will be left standing. As painful as it is to cut these trees down that appear to be healthy, I know what's going to happen. So I pick the healthiest tree out of the middle and everything else has to go. I have to cut them down in a way where they don't uh, all end up hanging up on each other. So I got to think about what trees are staying what trees are coming down and how to get them all down safely. I have the excavator reserved for another seven days and the focus this coming week is going to be all around the new water tank shelter and getting it dug out and hopefully getting the structure started as well. 
If I have enough time during the week, I'm going to bring the excavator over here and do some cleanup. And my hope is to get everything that I've cut down here piled up and the firewood separated and stacked so it can be drying as well. As soon as I can, I need to take the firewood that I've harvested from this property and cut it up and split it so it can be drying for the upcoming winter. Soon enough we're going to be having fires again, and while green maple can be burned, it's definitely not what I want to burn this winter. If I put a nice chunk of dry maple in our stove as we go to bed, we are easily fine until after we wake up. I am done for the day, but I will get back out here probably uh, in, a, in a couple of days and finish cutting as much as I can this week. Uh, that way next week when I have the excavator, I'm, I'm just doing cleanup. So we'll see you guys in a few days. We are on our way as a family to go spend the day together as a family. We got all the kids and the... Meeting everybody there. At our favorite... How old? It's been nine years. Since I've been back. They, you guys go every summer. I just stay kids home. Kids and I love it. I just stay home and work. Heath doesn't do public so well, so... <laughs> I'm going to do it today, though. Everybody's waiting for us. We got to go get the other kids, then we're... Then heading we're up. Heading up. We just realized it's been 13 years since I've uh, been here with the family. The family, Cedar brings the kids every summer, but one, two, three, Lagoon. Lagoon! Lagoon! This is the main reason why I came here. I got a toilet on a pedestal. I was scared I was going to fall out. That thing is too much. Yeah, Heath had his eyes closed. I'm the entire time. Tears. I Bro. Died, we I would get so much tears. money and free Lagoon for the rest of our lives. If, if what? If, you, if one of us died. If you took a life. header off it, that's kind of what I was thinking the whole time. I'm like, well, we're all together. I guess that's what happens. Don't puke, bro. Christian. Yeah. Don't puke. Hold on tight. Oh my. 
my gosh, are you out of... Christian's, Christian's legs look like his legs were like flailing. Like, yeah, I look like Christian was in like in a high chair swinging his leg. Oh my goodness. Hey, what's this ride called? Family therapy? Cedar. <laughs> Don't hurt me too bad, please. I gotta work tomorrow. No whiplash. I'm coming for you, Reed. Bam! What's up now? Bam! We're doing it. <laughs> what a triple whammy. <laughs> I'm calling your insurance agent. Hey! <laughs> this is my kind of ride right here, guys. Well, that spin's just slow enough. Hey, we need to do that at our property. Look at, and then it's through the tops of the maple trees. Yeah, you can snowboard down. If we have For to, real. Keep cutting them down. Excuse me? I thought we left that in the car. <laughs> We're about to get oh, scared. Are you scared? Did you get scared? Did you guys scream? You and your sister? Yeah. You want to know why I have so many bumps on my head? That's why I'm right there. Oh my gosh, you're almost there. I, look, I can't even touch with my fingers. <laughs> You're already squirming, bro. It's hard. Come on. <laughs> no, I thought you had it that time. All right, let's see what Red does.
Tennessee. Oh, I got a little girl. Well, maybe our peacock. Who been waiting? Promise that she's married. <laughs> Mr. Kane, when we leave the sea, I'll shovel coal. Lord, to pay my fare. Called, I'm about to get soaked, right? It's called, this is dad's speed right here. Ooh, look at the old houses. Ooh, look at board and bat inside here. Ah! Ah! Oh, that's cool. That's cool. All right, I want to get off. I changed my mind. I want to get off. I changed my mind. Right clean there. Oh my god. I didn't even step out. I didn't even step out. I didn't even. I didn't even.